Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, but we gotta read about no patience for uselessness. Ibuka Masaru was on the warpath. He gathered together a small army of company men in the newly renovated Lego complex to listen to a presentation given by him and the Fujitsu leadership. His voice boomed from the bank of loudspeakers. I have no patience for incompetence. I have no patience for inefficiency, and I'm sick to death of seeing you all let such sloppiness slide. His finger roved over the suits in the audience as if he were trying to scour the mother of mediocrity with his will alone. At the far end of the huge conference hall, Morita Keo fumed. Ibuka's speech had been going strong for ten minutes with no one in sight. The only times Ibuka stopped were when he was called upon smiling, it's his smiling, Fujitsu cronies provide facts and figures on producti productivity losses. As of this moment, said Ibuka, we put an end to use of things. We, are the, we fire the incompetent and eliminate every single inefficient process. And we start, his finger landed squarely on Morita, with Sony and Chung Kong. Morita barely held his tongue. I was not going to go unanswered, but for now he had no choice but to let Ibuka have his day, of course. The end of use of things? Oh, maybe, just maybe. Uh, but right now, we're going to go ahead and go with a new pearls for the new era. Ibuka and Fujitsu stand for innovation above all levels. A new way of doing things is one that gets rid of inefficiencies in the bloats of yesteryear. And there's no greater symbol of bloat and inefficiency in Guangdong than Hong Kong and Macau. Hong Kong's financial sector, packed with loan sharks and over-leveraged retail banks, is a dark spot in our credit worthiness. Macau's vice industries make us the laughingstock of the sphere, but with enough investments, the cities will become home to thriving tech industries with Fujitsu front and center. Soon enough, my pearls will be tech hubs on the level of Koshu itself, which would be very nice. Very, very nice. <clears throat> oh, and right now. Uh, it is May 15th. Uh, we've got some comments to go through. We, got, we, got, we really see have a political power for all this down here for the you know, product cycle. Uh, the National Protection Army is looking like it's doing pretty darn well, unfortunately, for uh, China. But, you know, it might not last. We'll see. <clears throat> that being said. Uh, but after this one, we're going to go look out for the unexpected. Because this one, building what we have, decreases Chinese support. And I don't want to decrease Chinese support anymore. Creativity can come from the most unexpected places, and sometimes it can be useful to step outside one own's perspective and become inspired. Renewable energy is certainly one solution to our severe energy needs, but the technology for it is na still nascent and still yet needs to be really fu fully realized. Investing resources into commercial solar panels and turbines will ge that generate energy from the wind itself would largely be an de innovative, deeply innovative experiment of venturing into a largely unknown ground, and yet it is a challenge that our scientists are more than capable of handling. All the better the achievements they make in the field of renewable energy give us a head start over others across the globe. A question of quotas. Um, oh, if you remember this, I've read this one before. Please go ahead if you like to read about this one. Um, China's government support will increase. Growth will increase by 0.05%. Close, shows quality and closes doors. More Zhujin support. Hmm. Hmm. Well, in the meantime, it's 1966. Anything here we really want to care about? Yes, please. Uh, well, I mean, really. And realistically, let's come down here first. Do that. Cut down petty corruption, but we're not too bad right now. The Japanese absolutely love us, but. <clears throat> so we're at 0.39.99. We're at 25%, which is not good at all. Uh, I want to go with Zushin support. No, let's go with Chinese support, just because we could honestly use more support. So we're going with that one. As poverty still is slightly getting worse, but you know, whatever. Ah, the beginning of the product cycle. Fujitsu is the future. So, we don't have a lot of good quality to begin with, which really, really, really sucks. But, you know, whatever. we got some improvements here to do as well. All sorts of train stuff, why not? Motorized, that's a bit ahead of time. Actually, you guys, you guys, you guys are still ahead of time. Uh, World War II armored trains, because why not? You know, why not? But, let's begin over here. <clears throat> with the PCM-24 transmission uh, equipment. Halved power consumption, pulse cold pulse code modulations and average, above average profitability which is pretty good overall but uh huh oh, look at that data storage processes not bad let's take a look see product product well, we're gonna spend the most political power first so we can get these to come back um with this up here it's at 93 percent so i don't mind burning a little bit of goodwill from them and you know what we even have japanese support either so we can that too 35. We could do that. At least do that one. We're going to save. We're not going to. No, screw it. We'll do it anyways. Got some cons to go through, too. Oh, leads, uh, roads lead to Koshu. But how, this can fit how many pieces of paper? Also, we do have a cup of peach tea here to keep us nice and warm. Well, let's see. I think I read this one before. So if you read this one again, please go ahead. And right now we get 2.3 political power per day, which is not enough, but whatever. Uh, where are we at? 
14% and 31%. Not ideal. But now we're at 39% and 31%. <clears throat> if you're wondering about Brandy, please go ahead too. Survive, you must let everything burn. This guy's actually going to do very well here. Holy crap. Ah, uh, so losing it. Okay. Alright, anything else here we really care about? Lost 3% there, but honestly, I don't really care. 3% was like almost nothing. See, things are way. As the book of Finnish reading out his proposal to renovate the economies of Hong Kong and Macau for the construction of tech oriented services over a span of five years, he looked up. Expectantly at Kumai and Yokoi, sitting across from him at the conference table, perhaps unsurprisingly, he looked particularly enthusiastic. There'll be a lot of existing investment down the drain, Kumai com commented. Good job, but his money has been sunk into the manufacturing sector here. Our creditors won't be happy. The old Chinese families won't be pleased either, Yokoi added. They still have significant interest in the manufacturing sector. They won't look kindly on such an infringement on the economic power base. We'll deal with them, Mibuka replied airily. We'll push a marketing campaign on them, tech us a future. Japan will get much better returns here than they ever could have in the steel mills. If the Chinese aren't happy, you have my permission to employ more unorthodox means to keep them in line. How you achieve that is up to you. So you're leaving us to pick up your garbage, Kumai asked, his jaw uh, tightly clenched. Mibuka chose not to respond to that little outburst. Instead, he put his papers back on his briefcase and stood up, indicating that the meeting was over. Kumai and Yukoi got up as well, not as stiffly, and swept out of the room. Everyone has, has to pull their own weight. As we will do our own compost, because I don't want to lower any more Chinese support. <clears throat> you know, we're going to decrease Zujin support, but whatever. Actually, that's only decreased by 1.5. Ah, they're both 1.5. <laughs> As the demands of the current bonus cycle come to the forefront, the chief executive decided that the focus of the steel belt will, for now, be focused on the production and fabrication of electronic components for Guangdong's burgeoning electronics industry. We'll certainly slow the rate of growth within our industries to reduce our independence on Tokyo and allow Guangdong greater independence, if at the cost of slowing the development of the steel belt as our industri industry specializes. I want to wait for this other one to come up. And I lied. Where are we at? Fifty-four percent is still not too bad. And they're slowly getting being back. Chongqing is uh, not looking great right now. At least for them. Fifty-nine percent, forty-six percent. Yes. And happy uh, July, everybody. Happy July. One of the comments from the last video said, The perfect technocracy. Absolutely. Absolute perfection. Um, oh. Where are we at economy wise? So 90% is pretty good. Surplus, we have a slight surplus. 29 billion, almost 30 billion. Not bad. There you go. Ah, uh, let's see, product markets. Who do you want to sell to? Honestly, I could, use, I could use more Chinese support. You know, I want more profitability. That makes more sense for us. You know what? Look over here, forty-seven percent monthly Chinese support. Professor, I'm going to do the Ch Chinese. Even though I want to do these other markets, um, more opinion from them is always good too. At least for now. There you go, too. Hmm. Give freebies to the Chinese. Uh, that's not bad, too. We'll actually do that one. Repletion zone. No, I assure you, the Polo Silicon is by far the cheapest component in the chain and remind the Imperial University of their agreement with us. The Americans may have invented solar cells, but it's Fujitsu that shall make simply more of them. That, I assure you. Click. The call of Fujitsu headquarters is over. Now, for matters closer to home. You say the tower is made of structural steel? With its proximity to the shoreline, only marine steel can be used without excessive corro corrosion. Have them rebuilt the prototype at once. Click. It appears that the engineers of Guangdong's Fujitsu branch have buried themselves so deeply in the weeds of the electronic sector that they have forgotten how to protect a wind turbine near the sea. How could Ibuka hope to make this enterprise an envy of the world when their subordinates made such elementary errors? The phone is ringing. <clears throat> This time, someone was calling him. The voice on the other end gave him a slight shock when he recognized it immediately. It was Higuchi Akira, one of his old associates, who had originally come from Tokyo Tele, but now worked for Fujitsu on the mainland. Apologies to interrupt your work, Mr. Ibuka, but I'm uh, curious about your latest pet project. The sums that you have allocated for research into adapting solar pet cells and wind turbines for commercial electricity generation are unprecedented. Despite the cost of these systems remaining far higher than their established counterparts, what has gotten to you to pursue this long shot? Of course, Higuchi already knew the answer. Still, it was worth reminding the mainland of what he stood for. Ibuka began his reply, a smirk forming on his face. Humanity would not be halfway where it is now without challenges such as these. They force human ingenuity uh, to come to the forefront, and that's a great relief from the mind-numbing administrative work most of the time, uh, most of my time is occupied with. I do miss the days so I could focus on engineering, call it childish, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Without our, without our inner child, we would still be living in caves. The workshop ablaze. The fires of innovation burn 
hotter and brighter than ever. What are you in for? The weeks of frenzy development and rapid expansions come to close as the current business cycle comes to an end. As the last orders are fulfilled and delays are now, workers, supervisors, and managers taking sides of relief. Guangdong's industries have grown and expanded in these recent months, and the workshops, factories, and furnaces around the three worlds are already gearing up for the next wave of contracts. But the market doesn't rest, and neither will we. Because why would she? She? We? Why would we? 44%. Uh, great. We still need more interest. That's more demand right now than anything else. Uh, if we don't have to do this one, we won't. I don't really want to do that one, but we're going to do it anyways. And of course, this one will pop up immediately after we click on that other one. <coughs> uh, of course. Hey, advancements in computational power technology, sign us up. Two needles in a haystack. There's something odd about this factory. On the outside, it looks just like any Fujitsu manufacturing plant John might be sent in to get in any given week. But again, she gets persistent sense of deja vu as he moved crates back and forth, inhaling the smoggy air. Finally, got back to the break room what seemed like an eternity. It had hit him. This cafeteria had seen it in an ad before. This factory had been in a Fujitsu commercial. One of the ones Hay had been ooing and aahing over. A small park, uh, spark of curiosity flared up in Chun's exhausted mind, and he made his way over to that supervisor. He was watching them while he was an eagle eye. You know what would happen if anyone named Hayes been here recently? Sean asked hesitantly, keeping his eyes respectfully pointed at the floor. A dismissive snore came from somewhere over his head. You think I keep track of every darn person that comes into and out of this place? Said the supervisor, get back to your table, I'll get you back out on the line early. Chun sat and walked away, exhausting overcoming him once again. It wasn't like it mattered much to anyways. All work and no play. On to bigger things. <clears throat> As Guangdong's economy roars back to life, the chief executive is now finally free. The focus on his per own personal dream. The creation and development of institutions where men like Ibuk and the fellow talented and like-minded engineers can be left to tinker on their own, given time and resources, produce marvels for all the world to see. But the cultivation of bright young minds will not only come help to ensure Fujitsu's future, but that of the all of Guangdong, of course. Hey, the PCM-24 transmission equipment. And the brain must work as hard as their hands, or else Guangdong will lose its luster. <coughs> Current products quality, well, while well, largely invisible to the average user. The telephone network enjoyed by the citizens of the sphere is built upon enormous infrastructure. It is this infrastructure that Fujitsu hopes to transform with the latest product, the PCM24, which can convert ordinary among analog telephone signals into digital signals using a process called pulse code mod modulation. So not only give users a cleaner signal, it also cut in half the amount of power necessary to provide the signal, greatly reducing the cost of running telephone infrastructure. It was growing more connected, and Fujitsu plans to be on the front lines of building and improving the technology that makes those connections possible. Hello? Can you hear me? Now, as so we had a product, product profitability of 138%, so overall not bad. So it increases the Republic of China's opinion almost by 7% and Chinese government support, which is pretty good for us, too. Uh, I don't think we can do that one yet, so we're not going to. In the meantime, we're going to come back down here and keep doing this stuff over here. So with that in mind, 22% growth, 1.41 uh, billion in growth, or so plus. Overall not bad, but now we've got to really focus on these guys. Now, what are we doing? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. The police are dominant across Guangdong, which is actually really good. Uh, France lines with Germany, huh? So monthly government support goes up, more China and Japanese opinion cap is up, Chinese Zuzhen assimilation, which is not bad, 39%, 26%, not great. Um, so with all of these, this is actually close to getting overtaken by the Yakuza, close to being overtaken by the Yakuza, close to taken over by the Kampai Tai, as well as the Kampai Tai over here too. So we don't have any corruption for these guys, these corruption guys give us corruption, that's going to be very hard to take. This is 18 away, which is pretty tough, and this is 15, so we're going to start with this one. I take it away from the Yakuza, and this as well, so we're going to start there, and then do this one next. It's going to be a long road till we get there, so which really sucks. Got to keep some political power, um, got to cut down more on corruption if possible, you know, all the good stuff. Hot streak. Um, in a dimly lit room, guarded by a single man with a pistol at the door, sat, most po sat the most powerful man in China. On paper. It was an ad hoc meeting, guaranteed only by Fujitsu's clout and reputation, and in the back of the mind, Gao Zongwu cannot rule out the possibility that this would be the pathetic way his death was going to be recorded in his history books. His gloomy thoughts were sharply interrupted, sharply interrupted by a burst of glittering light from the projector, a map of China, with the major cities highlighted and stared back at him. As the presenter continued, lines like spiderwebs grew from the bold and named, connecting further and further and obscuring the smaller names entirely. The true scale of Ibuka's plan became evident. Fujitsu was... <clears throat> Uh, computer centers have been finished in Shanghai, Nanjing, and Beijing, and have already been interconnected. Contracts to process import-export data from major ports have also been finished, and currently the Nanjing office is able to accelerate the process so considerably as it actually facilitated the export of more goods to the sphere. Consider currently, we're also working on lines to uh, Ningbo and Fuzhou, which may require extensions to the budgets outlined in the document given, and we also began computerizing the records of the police forces of the three cities, or three cities currently under the active scheme, additionally. 
And the man went on and on. However, the president realized almost immediately what was really being offered here. The chance to see China whole again, if not politically, then at least in communications. Please tell Mr. Yubuka that he'll have my full cooperation in expanding the program. So we're going to get this one next because it does expand uh, Zuzhin support, which is what we want. So we got to wait a while, though. 1946 Part 1. I think I've read this one before. So if you want to read this one, please go to head. Yep, time to go to Colombia. Poor Santos in overtime, yeah, but this is more important. So we can get, do this one and have it come back. What are you in for? John and his work, man. Sat on the hazy glow of the cantina at the sunset, lazily throwing dice into the bowl. Now it felt like partnering with their money, so instead they played for an out for honor. I'll get even scarcer in the dormitories of Koshu. One, two, three, you lose. Four, five, six, you win. Other things happen when other things rule, but as Chun saw, nothing really changed. Win, lose, draw, you're still here, and so are they. <coughs> they got to talking about their families. A conversation about this point as still as any other, but one which casts our minds away from this place. Wait, his cousin been transferred to a planet in Hong Kong a while ago. I hadn't heard anything back. You shouldn't uh, <clears> have. <throat> the lady's sister was getting married, and he was still trying to scrounge together enough money in the days off to go to get with a decent gift. As far as Chun could tell, his family were still doing fine. Hey, was apparently getting on well, but all the news you heard about him was secondhand. It's like a thought he didn't want to think about this. It's too. Maybe another topic would be better. They discussed their working days. What machine broke on their line this time? Who got injured? The fun new Japanese insults they screamed at them. Their sore knees, their aching, arching backs. Breaking backs, their pounding headaches, it never ended, nothing ever changed, something had to be done, but none were quite sure what to do. No one wanted to say anything openly where the supervisors could hear. They resolved to discuss this later before some pencil next Zushin sycophant decided to earn his dog treat admonishing them for posture uh, on becoming of the company, or something else equally moronic. Establish research box. Ooh! Increase more social costs, though. We're on the committee of technology. Growth is 0 0.05, academic base goes up. Uh, excuse me, more growth. Long don't need facilities for his bright and talented if they're to afford to feature for this end, crea end, the creation of new research parks to hone intelligent young minds and bring them into contact with like-minded fellows is an obviously necessary move. As an added benefit, these facilities allow for use of the first pick of Guangdong's best and brightest prodigies. The chief executive position, and Guangdong is a busy one, with a constant meeting to attend, reports to sort through in order to be authorized on most days. There were reports talking on the TV, the conversation in the hallway surrounding his office, and the headlines on the daily paper were nothing more than simple distractions. <clears throat> But Ibuka Masaru noticed one country's name being said across all three uh, uh, mediums over the past week. Colombia. And he began to ask his closest advisors about Colombia. How there had been a stalemate for years, suddenly erupting into a wide-scale conflict. How the mainland government was expected to support one of the factions fighting the conflict. How the IJA and IJN were constantly complaining about their outdated equipment. And just like that, he suddenly remembered one of the Suzuki's old projects that had been defunct for a while now. The Product Testing Research Group it sounded like an ordinary research and development team from one of Guangdong's many companies, but it was instead a weapons development team, working in tandem with IJA and IJN, to show that the Japanese military was always one step ahead of its adversaries. Companies would submit prototype we designs, weapon designs to the PTRG, and the Army and Navy would actually go out and test the prototypes. The group had been on the back burner since the Yasuda crisis, but there were dozens of project ideas that had been considered after Indonesia. The chief executive would spend the rest of the afternoon pitching the idea against, again to his contacts in the Army and Navy who were excited to hear that the program was being restarted. They always stressed their need for more reliable, more effective equipment, and if one of Guangdong's companies could provide it, the profits would make most of the product launches look like failures for Ibuka Masaru. There was, of course, never an option for surviving in Guangdong, and the PTRG would be no exception to that rule. One country's loss is another's gain. Subsidize, you bet we're gonna subsidize it. You bet we're gonna go to Colombia and burn a hole in all of our enemies. As best we can, of course. And if things go poorly, well, then I'll do some funky stuff around. Very nice. Good. Electric car cataracts. The lights never went off, not even at night. They dimmed at half nine, but never enough for Chun to be fully comfortable sleeping. All for the benefit, of course. It was a good thing that his thoughts were not currently of rest. It was obvious that no help was coming for him and his fellow workers up from on high. They could only look out for each other, in a place where they spent nearly every moment being watched by super superiors or super supervisors. <clears throat> Guards and cameras, even his modest goal, seemed to be purely aspirational. That's it, all the surveillance was handed to the lowest bidder, and in the complex as expensive as tenements were, it was bound to have some weak spots. Chen had taken a few leisurely strolls past the security stations lately, and even seen glimpses of the camera fee. Even assuming that they were main man constantly, picture quality came nowhere near the close to the human eye. Picking out subtle movements through all that static might be difficult. Almost everyone with any real power in this company was unable to speak the same language as the average worker, and the Chinese given su supervisory roles were chosen for loyalty over brains. Everything in his dorm was a blinding white, making it easy to spot contraband, but also so much harder to find small notes of slips of paper. I tried to learn one thing in all the time as a factory hand, it was that sometimes always stops working. Something always stopped working at the time of the lowest convenience. Sure, this must be both ways. Or work both ways. The system could be subverted and perhaps one day broken and beaten. We may hope. Alright, so we probably have the mountains. 
Uh, we're gonna start here. I'm gonna grab a dude. This guy. Got a lot of experience. From the Delicon Silicon Delta to the Steel Curtain. <clears throat> The business halls and the stock brokerages of Guangdong have exploded in activity following the announcement of trade normaliza renormalization between the Empire of Japan and the German Reich. Ah. While relations with the former allies remain shaky, the prospect of a thaw under previously incandescent Cold War is too precious of an opportunity to ignore, of course. Already the corporations of Guangdong are preparing their campaign to conquer Europe. With a population of more than 100 million, the metropolitan Ger Germany by itself represents a vast and untapped market for consumer electronics, and that number does not include the other members of the Einheits Pact. While German electrical engineers pioneered many aspects of computer science and Siemens remains at the forefront of electronics research, the German electronics sector revolves around the needs of the military industrial complex and heavy industry. Leaving ordinary citizens behind, this deficiency has become expectedly apparent following the economic boom caused the Minister Erhard's market liberalizations, which has raised the fortunes of Germany's middle class but left domestic manufacturers unable to meet the newly raised demand for consumer electronics. If the corporations of Guangdong are nimble enough, they might be able to corner the German consumer electronics market for the foreseeable future, of course. Some have expressed concern that Erhard's reformers may eventually create German competitors and enter the Reich's market will only make that possibility more likely. But the vast profits that could be made in the near term outweigh such fears. Let's be careful while we do not create future rivals. Awesome. The Colombian Command. Um, I think I read this one before. I hate this Takashima. I hate it so much. So if you'd like to read this one, please go right ahead. Ah, T is good. Wow, you got a lot of potential. Come on, show up. God dang it, show up. Well. That takes over Ecuador. So, use equipment as part of a battle plan. Night, river, mountains. This is oh, this is valleys. Okay, there's still valleys here. That sucks. Mountains. Oh, oh, look at this. this is different. They have another one up here too. Second patriotic army. Father of Acro. A curio curiosismo. Huh. And then we have Republic of Colombia. And the Colombian Revolutionaries. And then New Granada. Granada, Granada. Granada. Oh, they got him. <coughs> Formerly Community Technology. For um, every. Every day, new startups are formed in Guangdong from ambitious, innovative, and talented entrepreneurs. It's a sad fact that most of these startups fail. While often this is due to mistakes and failures of the entrepreneurs themselves, all too often promising ventures are cut short by circumstances outside of the control. The chief, however, seems to have a, a solution. Uh, the community technology aims to rectify this shortcoming. With a mandate to seek out, identify, and fund promising start tech startups and encourage innovation and creativity with awards, the community will ensure that those who deserve to succeed will succeed. Nice. Correct on corruption. Yeah, this point works well. Still working on all that stuff. Let's come down here and sure why not. The old report, CF. Uh, flew into Air Base, redacted with Fujitsu's SBG, hereby designed as FS. FS calls quest serve among the troops as soon as they landed, given that it required specialized training train locomotive to lug around. Our the logistics corps made a fuss about wasting fuel, but General Blank shut down concerns immediately. Thankfully, FS likely to stand on actual battlefield, so I suggested to Lieutenant Shiromi that the unit act as more of a standing artillery piece rather than a moving platform. D3 is 0900. Grids, units and grids 6, G6 and G7 are pinned down by enemy mortar crews. F's S crew are able to pinpoint exact location of mortar crews thanks to our spotters and are able to eliminate 5 mortar crews in just 8 shots. However, F is unable to provide additional supporting ship fire since locomotives are unable to scale a hill, allowing enemies to retreat and re-establish a defensive line. <coughs> D5, 2000, or 20, 20, 2100 hours. FS assigned to provide support of fire and grid L14, nearly 60 kilometers away. Despite nighttime operations, IJ Unit Blank reports enemy positions are thoroughly destroyed and are incredibly impressive both the fire rate, uh, fire rate and accuracy. However, a short circuit uh, cuts FS fire support mission sh short and ordering replacement parts takes three days. Final recommendation. Accuracy and rate of fire may be enough to salvage this design, but though it's hard to see it as anything but a stationary artillery piece with its awful maneuverability, need to lower its weight somehow. Shipping it here was bad too, or the design is dead on arrival. Replacement parts can be easily sent with FS next time. Not worried about that. Report received. One in crisis ends. A book of monsters, the paper. 
The moment he entered his office in the morning, his secretary handed the paper to him and told him to look over it in his office. Good news, she called it. When he settled into the office and looked it over, he saw the words he had been waiting for, Lung Yong killed in action. The last remnants of the Western insurrection had been taken out by the Chinese soldiers one night merely was over. The chief executive sighed. There will be more to say, of course, and more to do. China and its currency can never promise the kind of complete stability that the emperor always asked of it, and even if its loyalty might someday come into question, but this would be eternal problems. As a rule, they were not the things at which would harm Guangdong the most. He will come also returned back to his work. For now, the time coming to focus on inward once more. Guangdong had more than enough enemies already. Yeah, let them kill each other here, come on. Not us, but them. These are both valleys, which kind of sucks. Can you actually help them out there? Yeah, you might be able to do something here finally, maybe. An enigma of the present. Within a compact, dimly lit conference room, Mi Bukal Master, the chief executive and supreme director of Guangdong's affairs, pondered upon the future ahead of him. He saw a limitless potential, a ceaseless chain of triumphs and innovations, each link signaling a grander prospect for Guangdong, for the sphere, for the human race. Yet, with all the rumination about the possibilities of the path ahead of him, his mind drifted towards events which he had already traversed through. The failures of the past, as testable at horn, symbols of naivety. As personal contempl contemplations were disrupted by a creaking of a wooden door, two figures entering the chamber, Matsushita Masaharu and Komaya Kanichiro. Three minutes late, making Ibuka shake his head in disappointment before it proceeded onto proper matters. As per usual, two of the reserved seats remained empty. It was seemed that Morita and Lee were insistent on hampering his vision. Ibuka first turned to Matsushita, informing him of the increased economic prosperity and beneficial corporate competition. He handed Matsushita a series of documents, each detailing new directives which are to be implemented and exercised immediately to accommodate for the current situation. A beige file was handed to Ikomayo, the Ibuka instructing him to deal with a number of suppliers across Guangdong to negotiate for more export routes to all corners of the sphere. As the final words were spoken and both men stood up to exit the room, Ibuka's mind drifted once more, this time towards the enigmatic present. Both Kamai and Matsushita wish for futures according to their own visions. Undoubtedly, their ideal world contrasted different, drastically with his, and yet they are willing to remain loyal and allegiant. For once, you consider the work or outlook of Morita. They have been close friends and business partners once after all. How could they have, he live with such a fact? Does he not feel any sort of contrition for parting ways with him, for undermining his vision? Morita was a part of his past now. Ibuka reminded himself. All that mattered was the future, the remnant of what once was. Is this? That's a jungle, too. A smoke break. <coughs> the dummy camera stared at the group underneath the stairwell, occasionally blinking red, but seeing nothing. Arm hurts like a, a crap tom. Uh, said Ho Hyun, nursing his cast. Lunch got cut in half because I'm working at a subpar producti productivity. So, our break, I'll just glue the bone back into place real quick. Heaven's sake, is this what they teach you in those universities they're so proud of? Man, if they can do that, no wonder they won the war, said Dong Kwok. Maybe that's the Pan-Asian dream in action. Just think. After only a few short years of this, the laugh will cut you off your finger. And it'll go back before the supervisor yells at you. Then you only get your pay doc for delivering me. Imagine. Dunno, man, I've seen plenty of Japanese guys with missing fingers of mine a lifetime, said Jun Lee. Is Jun on the late shift again? Ho Yun nodded. Shame, this war is killing my butt. I've, I've got a mind to ask him if he can find a more comfortable blind spot. Maybe with a nice leather armchair, a view of the coast. No comfort in this place, said Dong Kwok. Not unless we can make it so. Make it so. So there's more of us each week, and there's only so many of them. One day, maybe one day, Dong Kwok's voice cut out as the sound of his steps echoed down the hall. His compatriots became very interested in the cigarettes. The guards had popped through. My pals are coming down here now, he said. I'll probably get going now, like you did before. The man nodded and started moving. Well, you heard the man. We cannot catch a break here at all, can we? These are very strong for some reason. Holy crap, yeah, we lose this, it's over for the war, so... Uh, let me double check and make sure we won't completely lose! Our first day in the park. The glass doors of the new research center in the outskirts of one of the three pearls of Guangdong open wide, and a mass of Japanese young people back packed through it. These students, graduates from the best university in the home islands in Korea, were fledging scientists during the, doing the things fledging scientists did. Three students from the Keio University were at the head of those mass students. Mass students. First came Hayashi Toshino Ubu, called Konjo Kun, Mr. Bravery for his reputation powering through the school tests of courage without batting an eye. Then there was Yume Yuki Mura Mi Mi uh, Miyako, called Furu san Miss Old. For having reached a remarkably mature way of going about things, finally there was a freakishly strong Tokushi Toshikawa Mori uh, Moriyuki, notoriously for, uh, notorious for nearly breaking up multiple people's hands while shaking them. Leading the students into the assembly hall, in which a picture of the chief executive held pride of place, uh, Toshinobu stood up and made a bold speech of that sort that his friends were used to. All right, you lot, listen up. You've been through a whole lot of academic challenges. Ten exams a semester, seven courses a term. We all know how it goes. Oftentimes, we might have fought each other. We might even have thought of each other as rivals, but it doesn't matter anymore. We're setting out on this new journey together, and that's all that matters. Got that? The students widely applauded and shouted their approval. Miyako, uh, Moriyuki, went up to uh, Toshinobu and congratulated him. In an impressively mature and well-thought-out speech, Miyako said, 
Miyako said, while Moriyuki just slapped him hard on the back and told him he did darn well, surrounded with all his energy and happiness. Toshinobu looked around at his friends and colleagues and savored the beginning of his journey. The dream was not escapism, nay, it was a courageous challenge in the business of ingenuity. Guangdong's new industry is built in the future, or more accurately, the invention of technological advances, advances that are then patented for future use. It is an industry fueled by the minds of three pearls and those of the Fuji 2 Limited, forged by the chief executive Ibuka Masaru and supported by the sphere's resources. A bidding art technology industry talent, the future is coming and will be built in Guangdong, and Fuji 2 shines brightest in all. Nice, more seats. The finest minds will be added to our sort of laws. We have nothing in the law book right now, though. Uh, we're doing okay here, so I did like have to uh, do some funky stuff to make sure that we would not completely lose, but you know, we'll see what happens. This guy's learning quite a bit, though. Arasu Saizo? But it's only a valley, which sucks. Jungle. Hmm. Come on. There you go. Home again. General Wolf done the food almost too fast to taste it. Before the dormitory, the barbecued meat he saw before him would have been a nice treat after a month. <clears throat> of stale company rice and fish which would care the sink of local river it had become a feast. It was good to be home and his family were related to see him. Wyatt had raced to his doorbell and squeezed her brother tight. His mother gushed over the new muscles that he'd apparently grown. Even Leong felt inclined to slap, clap him on the back and smile. <coughs> Everything seemed the same and Seemed the same as it left, but somehow strange, alien, as the dimensions of the building no longer quite makes sense a chun, not quite as familiar as it once was. Hay was absent again, of course. Apparently some kind of mandatory training scheme, but presumably they were fanning him up for the slaughter. Uh, chun swore to himself that one day the kid would end up building the machine that would swallow them all whole, but Hay didn't see it. His parents all seemed concerned, with Mai hoping Hay wasn't tiring himself out too much, with Leong hoping he was getting on okay with around the Japanese. Still, there was little chun he could do. He and his, his brothers barely saw each other anymore, and against the promises of a better life, no matter how illusionary. Illusory. A chunk could not think of anything he could say to sway him. All he could hope was for that his own efforts out of the workplace organizations would make things easier for them all. Not his brother's keeper, of course. Ooh, please don't tell me. Daybreak. Um, an early morning stroll was really a rare luxury for Chun, usually either working or recovering from work at this time, but until tomorrow at least, he was free of the complex. And a good additional fortune of it being the coach used increasingly rare, clear days. Unfortunately, Buka City had been built to accommodate a harsh artificial gear. Gar. Caring little for the elegant contours of natural sunlight, what appeared to radium in his village was now sickly. A dim orange miasma hung over the block after block of gray concrete and his empty glass, punctuated by rust and grime. The great neon bulbs were extinguished, and the weather-beaten painting signs of the remaining hangarons faded slowly into the gray. With the lights off and most people still sleeping, Koshi felt more like a mausoleum than a bustling capital. So not everyone could afford to be asleep or reflect on urban decay at this hour, and Chun's walk was now purely for his own morbid displeasure. He had a package to deliver, one which would potentially expand his little operation outside its original facility. His friends and security knew of a sympathetic guard in another complex, who would be able to deliver instructions and advice to his compatriots further afield. Momentum was building up far quicker than Chum would have assumed, both exciting and unnerving him. The more people they found and included into this, this thing, group, organization, the more they could do, but what could they do? What, could, what should they push for? The complex itself was as imposing and repetitive as any other building of its kind in Guangdong, and if not for the signage and the distance, Chun could have been taking it for his own. The delivery went smooth, and Chun was soon back on his way home. The future, however, would be much more difficult than a morning stroll. He could only pray that he and his friends could match the trial's head. Daylight beckons. Which one is this one? This is it's still valleys. Come on. Confessions of an engineer. There was a reason why Ibuka Masaru never showed up in the Shinto ceremonies in Koshu. His, 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 at times, poorly hidden scorn for the sordid claims made of the imperial government about the divinity and sanctity of, of the imperial house also had a reason. It was not ideological the way it might have been with an old exterminated Japanese communist no, it was religious. Ibuka Masaru was, in fact, a Christian. Protestant, to be exact. Always had been from birth. Obviously, that being CEO of Fujitsu and now chief executive of Guangdong, he hadn't had the time to make the traditional observances. But still, under the relief uh, privately, just to privately preserve some comfort of mind. He did get confused, though. One time he jokingly did a confessional with himself in the middle of his office work. The fact that it was typically Catholics and not Protestants that confess their sins to priests had been lost amidst the constant strains of entrepreneurial life and examined his conscience. The chief executive's conclusion was prosaic. For all the faults he might perceive of himself, he was a good person still. His cause was just, and it was still okay to keep going. With that, he once again made peace with himself, and he was happy. So we get lots of self production. So it limits the demands of our products. Um, which we could do, more approval, and it's light illuminates every other nation in Asia, or in house secrets, and we get more growth, and it shines alone, and increase quality, uh, the next product, minimum base and maximum base, increase some research speed too. Guangdong will go to the future, and the rest of the world will have to wait for a turn. 
The chief executive has denied the licensing of Fujitsu patents to separate companies, leaving the task of producing and utilizing patent designs solely in the hands of Fujitsu Limited. While limiting possible earnings, it has certainly kept Fujitsu products flying off the shelves. The man of silence supplies low as buyers. From Tokyo to Xinyan, Xinyan, eagerly wait the chance to buy products from Guangdong. After all, the future is for sale. All, all you have to do is catch it. Dream big, alrighty, Shikawa. Can you demonstrate what this mosquito of yours does? Certainly, as I'm sure your government people know, are no doubt aware, our fair state is beset by two of the worst kinds of pests. Our respectable businesses find themselves besieged by twin nuisances, rodent infestations, and juvenile delinquents. And this box you're supposed to solve this problem? Exactly. Now, I turn this on. You notice that things happen, however, not only to our ears, as we speak. The box is playing, playing a high-frequency sound, which is inaudible to our ears, but which younger people perceive as a highly unpleasant ringing noise. Placed near storefronts or train stations. It's already been drastically reduced, loitering the businesses of my associates. I don't mean to sound crass or arrogant, good sirs, but you'd be a fool not to invest. I see, you mentioned rodents? Ah, yeah, that's actually why I apply for committee funding. The issue with rats is they tend to already scurry away when you get too close to them, and unlike with teenagers, I like the facilities to test my effects safely and humanely. I am certain, however, with the government support, the mosquito will be the security device of the future. Oh, thank you for the time, Ishikawa. Just one more question, just as protocol. You can confirm to your knowledge that no components within this device of violate any existing patents or protections. We've had rejected a lot of proposals based on reverse engineered proprietary technology. Oh, no, patented... Ashikawa for components. Box collapse, huh? All that really matters to us is that we're able to carry all this stuff out. But if we lose Bogata, we're kind of screwed. No, not the product cycle. Yeah, this has turned into a gigantic mess, my god. So it looks like I'm going to have to maybe redo things here just a little bit more because this is really unfair for us. And I want to make sure at least we get our, our stuff done. So, Oh, corruption. Oh, it's all gone. Nice. Well, if we're here, what else do we have here? Um, well, we definitely want to take this state back, so there you go. The Yakuza still have a lot of control, which is unfortunate. Uh, product cycle, 148 days, so not bad. Yes, please do that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll do that too soon as well. Business of ingenuity, and of course, in-house secrets. A blue world. The personal eatery might have grown so familiar, so that's so alien. The table's not shifted an inch. The scenery outside the glass panes, however, certainly had, before the very eyes. Sony billboards and Chung Kong banners were steadily ripped off uh, Xiong Wan's skyscrapers. The skyline had become less of their own with each passing week, their pride legacy thrown into the mud trash. And there they sat again amidst incandescent droning of construction drills, all the mouth-watering foods in the world on the table, but not one bit of appetite left in their stomachs, until Marita finally fed up with it all, thrashes a chopstick on the floor. Darn, he spat. He spat. Stupid darn him. Okay, well, I know things are looking down more than ever, Lee tried to keep his composure, yet the quivering in his voice betrayed something else, but if we could just cool our heads and find a way out like we always did. What about the others, then? Marita darted to his feet. Small businesses, fledging innovators, everyone in Guangdong would carry on our shores. What do they do they have what it takes to make it out alive? He wheezed and sink his hand to his palms. Trademarks, trademarks, trademarks. All the book ever talks about in the anymore are stupid trademarks. But don't you get it, Kashin? He screamed into the smog choked horizon. Hadn't that vermin made himself clear enough? Everything he did to us back in 55 to T56, TR56, it would do to all of them. Dead silence. Whatever calmness left on Elise's face slowly ruptured as the two companions in adversity hung their heads low in mourning for the past and future. They can't let this happen. They had to swear their lives on it. We can still stop them. We have to. Also, uh, the research group is already is dead, basically. We didn't get any reinforcements from the capital, which is incredibly stupid. Um, so, of course, we did lose their capital. But we still have Cali, but, so we basically lost it. But back to normal Guangdong. We only had three com combat missions fulfilled for this time through, which really freaking sucks. Um, which is really, really god-awful. But we have 98, so we're going to burn a little bit of goodwill here. Um, with the research speed's not bad, but the reserves, but we want political power. Ooh. Why is it kept so low? 56. 51. Weird. But hey. We gotta suck. And we can do set of cameras, and I want to do that, but we have like no corruption right now. But it increases our support too. So. Wow. What happened with the Yakuza? Why are they so strong? My god. Uh, oh, wow. That's a lot. Yakuza is insanely strong right now. My god. Uh, we gotta get rid of them somehow. Interacting with the Yakuza, huh? What is this? Decrease Japs excess support? Oh, that wouldn't be bad, actually. Oh, we can do that one right now. Place a dominant here. Uh, what do we have here? Decrease Chinese support. Uh, cost, cost Chinese support. But we're not gonna do that one. Place a dominant right now. And that's what matters, really. And I'll do it for the other stuff, too. So, Overall, not bad. Not great, though. Yearly deficit, 
Uh, economic check. We're at 32.66 billion, which is not bad still, but... I really don't care who wins the Civil War. All I wanted was to get our stuff done. But uh, we need at least 29 billion, so we might have made it. Maybe. Japan, reckon everyone recognizes the honest government, huh? Oh, uh, here we go. So that's 18 away. That is... Actually, that's 14 away. Huh. Yeah, that's not bad. There we go. We're working on it still. But yeah, we can't get any more Chinese support. How do you get more Chinese support? Like, besides do like the focuses. And this over here. Like, I don't know how you do it. I don't want to waste corruption, but... For your, for your tomorrow. <coughs> There's no possibility, none at all, that any of the students that have been so courageously challenged by Hayashi Toshinobu on the first day of work should have, would have noticed the blood, sweat, and tears that had been poured into the research parks. Nor was there a likelihood that many of them would have cared, though Toshinobu, had he not been slaving away over a computer, would probably have expressed a grievance, and surely his friends y Yukimura and Toshikawa would have joined him. But they did not, even if they had not, even if they had, it would not have been enough for anything. The grief of the three students would not be enough to wash away the misery the grisly, horrific conditions which the mainly Chinese workers decided away to make the extravagant plans for the palatial research parks in reality. The sympathy of the three students without over much power to do much by themselves would not remove the fact that none of the Chinese laborers or any of the locals for that matter have the understanding or more critically of the material conditions that they would need to partake in the wild dream of innovation in which Hayashi and his friends were partaking. The concerns would not have expanded the ten or more years of these people continuously being treated as slave root bots in their own occupied homeland. <coughs> their lack of hostility towards the Chinese or laborers would not suffice to make the all laborers felt of the completed work more than brief. It would not alleviate the persistent physical fatigue or emotional torment. Still less would it assuage the workers' hateful fear of the Japanese managers that oppressed them. All the worse, perhaps better than to note that, that no youth, not even Hayashi or his friends, even paid a bit of attention to what had once gone to the dream they were living or thought about who was paying for it. It all made it easier for the Chinese laborers to envy and hate them. And we gave our today, but not of our will. Six, I can review, get back to work. I get more Zushin support. At least that one gives more Zushin support. We get 5% more cha cha Japanese approval, too. Holy crap. Well, we're at 99%, so we're going to burn some stuff here. Ninety forty-seven. Are you going to put that? Please go right ahead, too. God, I don't want to spend 60 political power just for that, but it seems like it might be worth it. 26%, 40%, which is better, broader horizons. Less charitable-minded individuals might call this monopolization to the voice of Komaa Kinichiro. Crackling through the receiver, Fujitsu is hoarding many pants for itself. One might think you are more interested in gaining a position of dominance for yourself than contributing to the Panagian cause. There's a definitive edge to Komaa's tone that Ibuka did not appreciate in the slightest. He reached out and pinched the bridge of his nose, taking a moment to repress the anger before speaking. My contributions to the cause will be on my own terms, he replied curtly. As my external secretary, it is your duty to market to the sphere on the conditions I set. As such, I expect you to adhere to them. Goodbye, Komaa. As he put down the receiver, he took a moment to rue the short-sightedness of the Hitachi man. A Pan-Asianism was nothing but 19th century imperialism imported into an era in which it did not belong. It would support a Japanese interests, and nothing more. A book, on the other hand, had much more uh, ambitious project in mind. One that saw no borders, that transcended spheres of influence and narrow ideological blocks. It would shake the world. A shame that Kamaki could not understand him. The hero's straws are many, and his friends few. The Guangdong Trademark Ordinance. The Guangdong, <clears throat> a trademark ordinance, is the final piece needed to finally ensure the position of both Fujitsu Limited and the chief executive of the Three Pearls. Creating stringent copyright laws, the passage of the GTO solidified Fujitsu's control over its newly patented technical developments, and would grant Ibuka the ability to pursue extremely damaging lawsuits against any who would think to use patent designs without prior knowledge or permission from Fujitsu Limited. Its successful uh, passage will firmly trench our dominance over the rivals in the Three Pearls, of course. And power managers. Oh. Ten point scale. And ending inequity. <coughs> Eliminate downtime. We're gonna really destroy any Chinese institution support, which we can't do. Punish mediocrity. Or recognize excellence. I kinda like recognizing excellence. Ten point scale. There's no room for in inadequacy. In a corporation, the necessary procedures will be taken to ensure that the capabilities of our employees are measured with precision. The collective data will be used to assess the value of our workers, ensuring that absolutely no parasites or idlers may survive. If you are found to be incapable or apathetic, your demotion or removal will be swift and guaranteed. If the opposite is true, you will be rewarded accordingly. This ensures that a workplace culture centered strictly upon a person's merits, for it is the only factor that assures efficiency. It does not matter how valiant your attempts are, statistics do not falter akin to human evaluation. Proposal of the Guangdong Trademark Ordinance. I still want to get this one time. And with this, I conclude our well-deliberated uh, proposal to reiterate Fujitsu wishes to <clears throat> uh, hereby consolidate its, rifle, its right to enforce punitive measures upon any and all intellectual property infringements. No voice shot across the hall. Marito, of course. F no. And then Ibuka. Saw that insect spring to his feet. His lackey Lee Kashin desperately hanging on to him. Okay, what are you... 
And remember the first ever Sony Chong Kong transistor radio, Morita turned uh, to the rest of the crowd, brought into the world in 55, not long after a president of Fujitsu, standing out on the podium, uh, he drove me out of the home islands. He clutched his chest. It's Kishin who helped me out of, the, of my three years of utter misery, and it's what the TR56 came to represent. A token of our friendship in the most unlikely places, and a symbol of Tokyo Telecommunications reward. No, not this crap, Mr. Morita. Whatever concerns you may have for this boat, yet... How well did our chief executive take it? He swung his finger towards the podium, towards the bookum. He sued us both because that's the only thing he knew how to do. Dread every dirty trick up his sleeve to starve us to death again and put a big effing show doing it. All in the name of intellectual property for a brand he had murdered in a cold blow with his own two hands. Can't you see it on on and on that imbecile ramble? Can't you see how Ibuka never cared about anything but himself? Murmurs erupted from all the corners of the complex. Can't you see how he'll throw us into the halls into his blenders? Whatever the heck will we do? Of course, that weather vane and Matsushita was nodding along. Heck, even stupid, stupid Kamado was frowning too. So why are you still putting your faith and your trust, your gosh darn conscience, into the backstab of the psychopath? This means war. Is there something beautiful? Oh, crap. The venue booking was stressful and difficult at the best of times. Getting somewhere to fit a certainly illegal gathering of workers in the hundreds was another matter entirely. Even if they squeezed together, Chun Dao did they could all be able to fit together under a stairwell or an isolated closet, yet somehow he had found a place, one in Fujitsu's great new empty shells, one day to become a warehouse or factory, another bureau mound. Chun was still struck by the sheer number of people who had turned out from different factories, all gazing expectantly at him. He supposed they did better not to disappoint them. He never thought of himself as a public speaker and had to prepare for this as much as he would have liked to, but he supposed he would simply have to do his best. Chun began. I guess I should thank you all for coming here. I guess I'll just get straight to the point, of course. <clears throat> I don't want to waste your time, but I'd like to start, think I work hard, and I'm not, like all of you, I just want to do honest work for honest pay. But how can we not, any of us do that when our dignity and our livelihoods are stripped away from us day by day, so all so foreign criminals can large, live large off of us? While well, our bodies break and our dreams are crushed and we receive barely any compensation, I ask you this, can you live with it any longer? Will you stand by and allow your brothers to be exploited at the hands of these parasites? Will you live without dignity? No, Kim, there's any reply again and again, and we're not going to take it. Greetings. Stop the thief, screamed the pamphlet at Ibuka's feet. That was it. Oh. Uh, uh, four, blocky, brutish, and comically overstretched Kanji, cobbling up into an excuse of his slogan with the subtlety of a three year old, the magnum opus of some of the homeless rando, surely. He gave his usual dismissive smirk that he lifted his shoe, ready to cast a junk paper into the wind and step into the Guangdong government complex. Then he saw the logo of Sony, no, Tokyo Telecommunications, da taunting him at the right bottom corner, a bottom right corner. Then the scorpion sting jammed into his heart and the venom flooded up his veins. No, it's gotta be a joke, get a frantic fit. He scooped up the pamphlet and flipped it back in. Uh, back set up, and sure enough, it was there. The 55 Fujitsu invasion of the three pearls. The August 21st, September 10th, and October 14th trials, the death of the, the TR-56 transistor radio at his hands. Everything that had anything to do with the Buka Masters botched murder of Sonus Lee Electronics, the innocent, all-loving do-gooder of Guangdong who looked after the downtrodden when no one else would. Everything written in jet black ink upon a scorching white canvas laid as bare as humanly possible for all Guangdong to see to point fingers at to stick dicks into. And then the daggers came at him. The murmurs of clueless pedestrians, the all too conspicuous was Chinese horror clogging the pavement, the pink banners floating across the street that hadn't been there yesterday. The loudspeaker shrieking, say no to hypocrisy, say no to the monopoly of the mind at Sony to on two blocks, three blocks, four blocks away, all banging on his eardrums again and again and again. It wasn't the average citizen's business. It should have been the average citizen's business. But today, Morita K had gone and done it. He'd taken the little fight between the two of them to uh, effing streets. It took us to someone to crash through the gates. His mind reduced to a f f flurry of static. It is July 17th, 1955. Today, Sonus Lee Electronics unveils itself to the world. It's not going any longer. Oh boy. Oh crap. There's still 54 votes, so. Fundamentally, spends Fujitsu's legal right over its intellectual property with the severe penalties to any and all copyright infringements. So, increased admin costs. More efficiency, though. So, 24 days still. Fujitsu versus Sonus Lee oral arguments in August 21st, 1955. Judge, to summarize the plaintiff's arguments, the dissolution of Tokyo Telecommunications from which the designs of the Sonusly TR-56 radio derives was done in a voluntary decision of the directors? Ibuko, that's correct. Voted and so decided, from what I understand. Oh, mer Oh, crap. Ibuko, that's correct. Voted and so decided. From what I understand, Merida's separation with Tokyo Telecommunications was equally voluntary and... As such, he has forfeited any right to the intellectual property of Tokyo Telecommunications. Morito. That's ridiculous. As ridiculous as a claim that I left the company voluntarily. I insisted that the rights to the TR-56 were Zai with Sony Lee. No similar designs were panned in Guangdong at the same time, or at the time when the TR-56's launch. How can one claim a right on something that doesn't exist? Ibuka. Have you forgotten these? Exhibit 1 presented. Blueprints of Tokyo Telecommunications watermark. Ibuka, go ahead. Compare these with the pamphlet of Sony Lee. TR-56. Uh, two, two, 
T-52s, even the printed circuit board. There's no noticeable dis difference in the design, as you should expect, with still in work. Marita, yes, I recognize its design. It never went to a pan office. It's my work as much as yours. What's your point? Ibuka. It was never yours or mine, Marita. It was Tokyo Telecom's, and is the recognized legal successor. Fujitsu has a right to any derivative designs and I demand compensation. The past speaks into words. Let the judgment roll down as water. As a Sony handled to the act of ordinance of granting the following effects. Sony's campaign of slander will be counteracted by her own. <coughs> Let's see how we do. Uh, but we do, like I said, we did do have to get ready for the uh, product cycle. Oral arguments. September 10th. The Ibuka. By your logic, Marita, you had an equal claim to the rights for what became your TR-56. Then these should have been exercised in Japan. If, as you say, you are blacklisted in Japan, then we could have challenged any such blacklist in court. But your self-claim says as Zushim, challenging Japanese law in a foreign court. It should have everything to a case of theft, not your entitlements. <clears throat> Lee Kishin. You may say that Morita could have contested his rights in Japanese court. I'm sure that Morita was in no condition to be moving anywhere. After his exile from Japan, with his permission, I would like to present these photographs for, or, of our work together. <coughs> Exhibit 044 presented photographs of defendant with witness at factory line. Defendant's face is sunken. Far weaker than he presents himself in court. Judge calls for the order as plaintiff as speechless. Marita. You said that I had a choice, but I, that I could, have I could have come back to defend myself. I said in Guangdong because I had no choice. No money, no prospects, dying on the streets, quite literally. You said that I had a choice, when in reality you offered none at all on that day tel Tokyo telecom Telecommunications died. Camera flashes. Judge's calls for order to go unheeded. Uh, uh, city truck conti continues. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. Declare several of Chung Kong's assets to be extrajudicial. How far can we push this? <coughs> it doesn't go well, then it doesn't go well, and we'll try to do stuff too. Not great, not bad. But we'll see. Or arguments, uh, October 14th. Leave, and we can once again direct the court's attention to the activities of Fujitsu while pursuing this legal action, harassment of well-meaning businessmen, disruption of legal commercial activity, property damage, generating weeks and weeks of lost sales. If anything, we should be taking you to court for damages done, not Ibuka. That's irrelevant to the matter at hand. Every yen you make from the TR-56 is a stolen one, and from that on, count on. We believe the court finds the matter in our favor, as I'm sure Matsushita agrees. Judge says order. Matsushita Masaharu, as a matter of fairness and equal application of rules in the market, and we are in support of the case brought against the defendants, but we profess alarm at the notion that the business activities of the Sonus Lee Company are being disrupted in the absence of a verdict, that sanctions are being applied without fairness of law. Marita, it is, is it not clear to all that the law and fairness are two different concepts? When well, Vegito insists on its right to put us out of business, then that's a law. And when it says that there is a right for a local business to survive silence, what are the legalities of this case? The public knows that there's no recourse for them in the system. Ibuka, pay me a cynic all you want, Marita. You think I don't want things to change? We both did, but only one of us does now. Let it be. We have the sentence of death in ourselves. Masashita handled. Convinces Masashita's men that involvement in due process will benefit them. It's seven votes, which is still good. <coughs> What's next? We're still in the court ordinance. The rise of China's labor unions. For all the various propaganda and ideals in Tokyo or Osaka, my protest otherwise, virtually everyone knew in the heart of hearts that like Chinese people throughout the R old ROC lands had been turned into second class citizens in their own homeland, in Guangdong Harbor. Things had rapidly become worse than it did in the four years since Ibuka Master took power. The Guangdong of Fujitsu was its own monster, in a way that the Nanjing government, the Manchukuo, or uh, Guangdong Miyasuda and Suzuki were not. It was not beholden to even the weakened notion of consideration or basic decency that the prior colonial administrations adhered to. No, Guangdong was governed by only one thing, relentless power or relentless progress for its own sake. Many Chinese would have tolerated if this if Ibuka lived up to his rhetoric of universal excellence among all strata of life, but it was painfully clear after three years of the common sense measures uh, such as actually fixing the stratified society and bringing in basic welfare and labor regulations for the downtrend were never part of Ibuka's elaborate equation for that reason. Ibuka was increasingly seen as one of the greatest hypocrites to walk the face of the earth. So as time passed on, on the 55th anniversary, the founding of the Republic of China came and went. The Chinese workers of Guangdong slowly coalesced into pocket groups. The Committee of Chinese Labor, not the least amongst them. That few, despite everything, actually bought into Ibuka's vision, were of course excluded. The most proactive of these started with considerable, moderate strength and were strongly radicalized. They organized elaborate meetings of aiding digital surveillance. By reason and emotion, they extorted their countrymen towards radical action. And some of them took to the nationals, even communist theory and rhetoric. Not all or even most were so zealous yet, however. Most were nominal at this stage, the majority wanted nothing more than a semblance of solidarity, for they were simply too lost, too isolated to do anything more. Uh, as Damocles was so memorably shown by Dionysus of Syracuse, power is never secure. It is an intangible thing, twisting and curling, planning itself in the minds of men and dissipating seemingly at random. 
It is the image of a fish refracted through the water. Never quite where it seems to be, never quite behaving the way you expect. It takes cunning, ambition, and drive to make manage a touch of power. <clears throat> oh, we get more corruption too, goddammit. It takes, uh, it takes genius and good luck to capture fully. To bend it to one's will in such a way that it remains unchallenged, even then, Tom's ever-rolling stream will, at some point or another, wash it all away. <laughs> no good such luck had been afforded the chief executive. His three challenges, the barracudas or circling, had not given up their efforts to oust him and replace him with one of their own. With their seemingly limitless supply of funds, they chip away at the exterior of the Book of Masaru's edifice, one nibble at a time. With every piece that falls up, Away from the monolith, the chief executive's abstract measures of authority over the legislative council weaken slightly. The will of wisps darts away, perhaps providing an opportunity for one of his opponents to grasp it, should they have the list to do so. As favors are exchanged and opinions swayed on the council floor, a book on Master must intervene to shore up his position, or at least see his grip on history's coattails slip, slip loose. Leaving at the mercy of time's cold, dark tide, to control of the mind is no easy task, so the Guangdong trademark ordinance passes. Like a pinpoint the exact moment, Okeo's face turned devoid of all. <clears throat> Color. I saw him leap to his feet, saw him pointing his trembling index finger my way, shrieking and babbling of a monstrous future, of a land chained to the whims of a Cretan, and that of the fates of thousands forever crushed into powder. I reflected. As I stood amongst volley after volley of screams and insults on everything thus far, it has brought upon both of us the past moment of truth. And it finally came to me, just what has chiseled this irreparable rift between us. Because none of it made sense. Had it been you, okay, who had been so adamant about the achieving greatness within our own two hands, had it been you who had looked me dead in the eye in that conference room of the freezing February cold cutting us in, cutting into us, and I proclaimed to the men of Fujitsu that Tokyo Telecommunications has and will be forever our project, not theirs. Even in the face of being thrown out on the streets, no matter how I pleaded again and again for a reason, you insisted the first flash of your falling and maliciousness among so, after so many years would come, and as least. As you left, you gave your promise to leave our shattered past behind, for even you understood that there was nothing more we could do to save it, and I believe you, I really did, until I saw that empty drawer. Oh, how it come to this? What drove you to steal Tokyo te Telecommunications carcasses for yourself? And leave it with a frankincense monster. The moment I was greeted with all too familiar trapezoid and diamond-shaped insignia, taunting me on Koshu streets, I finally saw how you had fallen, so I did what I had to do. A cobbled of excuse of a radio deserved to rust in the gutter. Morita Akeo is the thief, the hypocrite, not me. Such was my final verdict of that man, delivered hours ago in front of the 98 pairs of onlooking eyes. I saw him freeze dead in place, mouth agape, until it collapsed to a seat with Lee attending to him. And that was when I knew that the fight for Guangdong's soul had been won. It is 1735. Praise be to the future, it was within her hand, so... Because we handled Sony, spend a lot of money. This political power, oh crap. Uh, decreases Japanese and Jusujin expat support. Ooh. Chung Kong handled, oh boy. But hopefully uh, the corruption will still wash down. We're really killing off our support here. God dang it. <laughs> We're really killing our support off. Empire managers, though. In order to increase and maximize employee efficiency and encourage beneficial innovation and truly gifted employees, Supervision is unconditional and essential. The thousands of workers occupying the offices of Guangdong's complexes require guiding hands to ensure their efficiency. The capable men bequeathed the managerial positions will receive increased privileges and jurisdiction over the men below them, further augmenting their authority over the colony of ants. No longer will the system be shattered and bypassed, undoubtedly, creating an environment where the merits and talents of the exceptional will thrive and flourish from their enterprises. Set up to fail. It was good that Zhang had two jobs to rely on. It was better that he belonged to the middle class than the middle class as ethnicity. The Zhujim, nonetheless, of course. <clears throat> The wood arrived inside his mailbox this afternoon and crushed his soul regardless. Zhang Yin had the heart to open up the thing, even though he could easily predict the contents of it. And said he suited up for the managerial position that he received at the high-end Japanese dining establishment near the coast of Macau, or Macau, and took the letter inside his pockets, making his way to the cars he took every day to work. Driving had been complete crap. Macau was in the midst of a particularly hot summer, and the bustled air unit the company car used was no help. He was sweating so darn much he was stuck to the seat. He checked himself out of the rearview mirror. Both cheeks were bright red, and his forehead was coated in a thin layer of sweat. It looked like a lot of the calm, cool manager Zhang Saiteo arrived at Ginza Fukuju every weekend this past year. He ghosted his hand to his pocket, lightly squeezing the letter between his letters or his fingers. Zhang had high hopes for his vision, and for what laid inside the envelope had doomed it all. Screw it, Zhang muttered. The Fukuju could hear it multiple minutes without their manager. Could bear them. He wheeled the car over, parking next to some store, broke into the letter. Mr. Saito, while I appreciate your vision and entrepreneurial nature of Fujitsu Limited Company, has decided that your unofficial rebranding and selling of our products is no longer maintainable, and as such, we have decided to send you this letter. We maintain that your practice is highly illegal. Reverse engineering official Fujitsu products is a crime liable for prison time and a large fine otherwise. If you do not wish to ask the issue further, please send your thoughts back to us at this address. Yours truly, Ren Kujo. We gotta be working. We gotta have the police on our side, at the very least. 
because right now we're at 25%, 26% still, which is good. 39%, which didn't go by, down by that much. We can burn as much Japanese x passport as possible. Some comms included as well. Can you try Yaki campaign? I haven't seen you do any that are years old. Well, there's not really been any update for Yaki, unfortunately, at the time of recording, so. Oh, crap. Come on. Bruh. And someone uh, says, yeah. And please raise the Zujin and Chinese support for God's sakes. Increase police control. Oh, we're trying. We're trying desperately here. But maybe we're not desperate enough. <laughs> because the Yaks are doing very well, unfortunately, against us. And Pirates are only getting worse, that's all. Growth is not enough. Keep coming back here. Just want to raise support, man. Can we lower the Yakuza? Yeah, we could. Product diversification. You know, it lowers uh, Champions X Pass support. Mm. Increases this one up by a little bit, which actually leads to more corruption, but gives it more monthly trans support, which is not great. But this is lower the Yakuza support, I guess. The room is dimly lit, and the projector humming and flickered as it beamed the presentation on the board. A number of stakeholders watched in silence as Yamuchi to deliver a report on Nintendo's latest uh, range of entertainment products. Their presentation flicked through several images of as each one as Yamauchi read through the relevant sales figures, occasionally giving a somewhat embellished story of the development of each product. After all, company mythos could amount to a lot. The first product covered in the reports was Gunpai Yokoi's extended arm, released as the Ultra Ham. The toy proved a commercial hit, selling as a children's toy among the Guangdong expat community and eventually expanding out to China and Japan. The success of this product kickstarted a frenzy of new product design concepts as Nintendo rushed to exploit this newfound demand for novelty toys. The Love Tester <coughs> followed a real milestone for the company as it was the first to use electronic parts and open up a novelty toy market to adults. Other products, such as a baseball launcher dubbed the Ultra Machine, has also proven successful. A consistent part in the designing of all these toys has been played by Gunpai Yokoi, the worker now titan in the emerging world of novelty toys. Yamauchi couldn't help but a smile as his small audience laughed at one of the antidotes. The normally sincere man had been rejuvenated by the recent shift in Nintendo's product line. His personal love for his uh, playing cards remained, but he couldn't deny that Pajitsu had opened his eyes to the future. Cards were an anachronism now, a product of a past time where plastic and electronics were undoubtedly the new model for the consumer entertainment. Unchained from the prejudices of the past, Nintendo finally found its calling. The whole trend extends to its grasp of the future, keeping the how employees honest. The chart occupied one wall, whole wall of the room and was divided into several columns, loyalty, competence, and teamwork, among others. The left or smooth column held the names of every worker on the floor of Haru Limited. Kiyoshi had found its name in the middle of the pack. Not great, not terrible. The other men garnered or gathered around the chart alongside Kiyoshi, each looking for his own name and current standing with Haru. And presently, Kiyoshi was given by Hideo Yoshida, a friend of his from long before he worked at the Haru Corp. Hideo found his name in the top 25%. Not bad, huh? He said with a smile on his face. Kiyoshi uh, grumbled. A 7 in teamwork? He'd never been a team player your whole life. Before Haru or Hideo, Hideo could even reply. There was a shot from behind him. They turned and saw Medea, who worked across the floor from them, charging towards him. Who did you bribe, Medea Bella? Who did you bribe, Yoshida? I want to know. Hideo raised his hands offensively. Koshi, Kyoshi took a glance back at the chart. Medea's name was in the bottom of the 10%. I worked 10 times harder than you, Medea said. How do you end up so much harder than the chart? Hideo rolled his eyes. Keep telling yourself you're a hard worker. It might even be true someday. <coughs> Medea's colleagues fought to keep him from leaving at Hideo. Kiyoshi sighed and massaged his temple, as these charges were no good. They served only to pit worker against worker. Maybe that's what Fujitsu intended. When instituted them across Guangdong, but what could Kiyoshi do? Argument was the antithesis of work ethic. Race you to the top. I'll eliminate downtime. We've learned that far too many of our workers aren't actually working well on the clock. After looking into the causes of this, it appears to be there's a lot of downtime, where workers will talk to their friends or rest rather than focusing on being protective. To combat this practice, while well, physically separate friends at the workplace, move workers to a busy areas in production to prevent slacking or remove unauthorized time off from pay. With this, they will quickly learn that when they are in the workplace, our profits should be their priority. Also, I've heard that they're doing this, drafting a plan. Oh, um, these six focuses here that are covered up by a little bit by this event here are very, very important. And I'm not sure which ones to do. Um, cool, cool, and cool. Like big ambitions, or well, aim how to take down the triads, uh, versus realistic expectations, which does increase political uh, police control by a little bit more. Uh, will handle it with surgical precision, or a synergistic delegation. I mean, the Yakuza's resources, which I don't really want to do, and shock and awe, um, which is not great for us. But keep it quiet, which I don't want to do either. So I might just go with all three off the side, or maybe big ambitions. Um, we will handle it. Maybe just keep it on the left side. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna do that one because he can. Uh, Advent of the Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen. 
Um, Zujin Kanto had always been artificial. This one, this everyone knew, not at least amongst the Ibuka Masaru. When he took power, the people of Guangdong knew at once that he knew. But it took them until later to realize that Ibuka was perfectly willing to capitalize on it, in every sense of the word. This struck everyone as notable. It shocked many, but it appla- appalled Zujin middlemen and business owners in particular. Under three years of Ibuka's rule, the concept of Zujin had become more and more hollow and customary, where it once meant something more under Matsuzawa and Suzuki and their predecessors. Now it's just a formalized title, dangling carrot whereby anyone, Japanese or Zujin, it matter not, could achieve excellence. Little privileges have been associated with being Zujin had been stripped away. Whatever marginal ben- material benefits may remain, and whatever assurances Ibuka offered were not enough to shake the Zujin feelings of mental and perhaps physical marginalization. In fact, Zujin middlemen and businessmen often complain that they could practically feel Ibuka's disdain for the concept of Zujin as it had been when he took power. In the end, some of the most proactive Zujin said, We're no- We've no choice but to close ranks and organize. Not overly, of course. We need to have at least a semblance of du- unity, some way to represent ourselves. Not just that, though, a semblance of identity, some chance of survival, a potential, potential opponent? Maybe. And the Yakuza went back up, god dang it. They need to be broken up harder. And power managers, as the manager's king. They're going to by 1941, or 1949, part one, please go right ahead. <coughs> <coughs> Ito Kiyoshi fell, filed in the office with the rest of the worst co-workers. The uh, work day at Haru Chemicals Limited it had yet to begin. Kiyoshi, like many of those white-collar fellows, always showed up for an hour before the official start of the workday. To do otherwise would be to catch the eye of the president, Haru, and the other executives. Employees must exceed the call of duty always, so what was the purpose of this surprise meeting? Haru cut a kingly figure in his bespoke suit. He stared each man down as they slipped past him and found a spot to stand. The office was getting cramped. Finally, Haru had the door closed and locked. There's a cancer among us, he said. His name is incompetence, and I'll have access at once. Kiyoshi squirmed. He'd heard this rhetoric before. He had a friend who worked at Fujitsu who spoke of Ibuka Masaru's endless tirades against incompetence and useless people. What Haru now said was a parroting of Masaru's words. Suddenly, Haru glared at seven men in the audience and called out their names one after the other. Uchido, Matsui, Noguchi, Sugiyama, Kudo, Onu, Wada. You are all terminated as, part of, as, this, as of this moment. Get your things and leave my building. The men called out, lowered their eyes, and shuffled to the doors. Kiyoshi knew these men. They had worked with them for nearly four years. He felt like they should, he should say something. Defend them. But how? At Haru Limited, President Haru was king. His word was law. And punish mediocrity. Well, we're going to recognize excellence. Make sure continue excellence. Uh, current excellence. Must be appropriately and swiftly rewarded. People must be encouraged when they show adaptability and talent in order for them to truly shine. These are the ideals of Fujitsu, which was and remains a company led by the pioneers of today's industry. In accordance with their principles, the most efficient and capable workers and managers will be singled out and rewarded with bonuses and promotions. All when assuring the upper management is made up of intelligent and capable individuals, this practice will make every worker devote their time to being the most protective version of themselves that they can be. Absolutely. So where are we at with this? I thought we were supposed to have better quality. CPM 12mm transistor coaxial cable carrier. Yeah, we're supposed to have better quality? Way better quality than this. What the heck? Like all the stuff down here, increase the current product's quality by 15%. This was supposed to be the next one. What the heck happened? Well, we've been lied to. That really sucks. Hmm. There you go. We can do that with for now. Oh crap. Yeah, another coup in Thailand, huh? No? Thailand's just not having a good time, is it? Just straight up not having a good time, my friends. But do we get 2.3 for the power cell? Yep, exactly 2.3. Nothing better, nothing worse. Just straight that amount. So, let's see. Iron Morse Code Engineers, quality is going to go up by quite a bit. Um, I kind of want to go and market to the German market because I've never done this. To say that our past economic relations with the German Reich has been rocky would be an understatement. With the relations quickly souring following the Second World War, our products have not yet found themselves in much of continental Europe thanks to geopolitics and superpower diplomacy. All that's changed since the rise of the new fear of Germany, however, as market reforms have finally allowed mutual trade to flow between the continental Europe and the sphere. German consumers may be less familiar with their products than those in other nations, but that is all just more reason for us to introduce them to that, that all we have to offer. <coughs> A new era of happy commerce could be right around the corner between us and this new Germany if we were to embrace this opportunity. We should be careful when dealing with one of Tokyo's chief rivals, though. though. Surely they can recognize a good business as good business, no matter where it comes from. <clears throat> Japan, would like, Japan would like us less, but that profitability, that's something we could really use. We'll try it for now. Let's we'll see how it turns out. 137%, not bad. Middling. Ah. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. That's like a hiccup, almost.
pretty good, pretty good. Yeah. Only 60, huh? Not enough. We should get the other one popped up soon, too. We're gonna just do this one anyways, too. Unburdening. Kyoshi Ito slipped his tea in the cafeteria of Haru Chemicals Limited's headquarters. His longtime friend and colleague, Hideo Yoshida, sat across from him. I, Kyoshi said, I thought things would get better. Hideo said nothing and simply listened. After we were purchased by Fujitsu, and Haru was replaced, I thought things would get better if Kyoshi laughed. Of course, I don't know what I should have expected. This is the book. We're talking about mass firings. Extra hours and worker charts are on par for a cor the course with him, but I just thought, I don't know, that we could have slipped under the radar somehow, be overlooked, have an easier time of it. Kyoshi hesitated before writing, I don't want to die at my desk. <coughs> Hideo said nothing and simply nodded. The next day, Kyoshi packed his personal affects into a box and cleaned out his desk. I bet the security man stood nearby, arms crossed. It was true that what they said. Nothing slipped past the book up. Could it have been Hideo? Uh, ending inequity. For far too long, Fujitsu has passed on talented young minds for engineering and design positions. Not because of a skill capability, but an irrelevant classification such as ethnicity and class. A uh, practice that only served to harbor bottom line and breed complacency within our ranks. No more to foster innovation and combat stagnation. The chief executive has seen fit to begin a new initiative to seek out bright entrepreneurs and individuals, regardless of their background or social status. Imbuing new life in Fujitsu's engineering departments and in deepening our talent pool. After all, our engineers cannot be the best in the world if we are artificially limiting our talent pool. Never let it be said that Ibuka is unsympathetic to the commoner. If they have the ability, they should rise to the top. Good. As it should be. We're only at 45 and 55, so... Canadian Centennial, not bad. Just waiting for one of these other ones to pop. Uh, and pop it will. Oh, look at that. The creaking wheel cracks. Ibuko returned to an office cluttered with gifts and letters. For the last few hours, he had to move from interview to interview. <coughs> as the world came to Koshu as, to ask Ibuko how he had done it, which he talks of genius and vision. Guangdong had just overtaken Manchukuo as a model economy for the sphere, for Ibuko, such a fact was hardly news at all. The press. So it was a great change, a shifting of the axis by which the sphere is turned. It was nothing of the sort. Such stories give you Manchukuo a great deal of credit, of course. Forced through a blunt trauma by a lost generation, Manchukuo had lost its, long lost its edge by the 60s. It was a pathetic venture, a vessel by which dying men flattened themselves. A flattered themselves, it was, in a word, obsolete. It was only a natural thing that Guangdong, an ancient grip to the cutting edge of modernity, would come to replace it. Yet, despite himself, Ibuka felt a hint of accomplishment. Surpassing Manchukuo had always been a goal, if only as a natural consequence of the projected growth rates of Fujitsu Limited demanded. Now, that goal is achieved. If the news was a byproduct of a greater plan, it was a useful marker of all the same. Regardless, the chief executive still had much to do. Half his day had been eaten up by the interviews. He had to redouble his efforts for the rest of the afternoon. A book of push with the book bouquets and envelopes on the desk to examine the blueprints beneath it. After a wonderful machine laid there, ready for his approval, a marathon begins with simple steps. Ah, we have beat them. Increase our seats by four. The Silicon Visioner has proven the perfection and merit of this engineer's citadel by leveraging the innovative spirit of the Zujin and confidence of the Japanese expats, granting the following effects. More Zujin support. Good. And Japan's approval by 12.5%. Holy shnikes. Holy thick fathers. Um, I'm gonna wait to click on this one because we have way too much to spend right now. 13? Oh, we can burn through this fast then. Holy. Oh, end of the right. Uh, oh, who cares? That's a lot of approval. We just don't have the political power to burn it all. Which also kind of sucks. Don't do that one. Holy fathers. <coughs> the right race. The vacuum fluorescent walls were everywhere. Uh, every floor of the Vichitsu building had corridors, offices, and conference rooms lined with these big digital screens. Employees' defeats, personal tragedies, salaries, and emotions were listed for all to see. Men were reminded every second of the day of their failings and compared it pub publicly to their colleagues. Even success were tainted by the glare of the wall. For once a man achieved it, he was forever held to it, and the slightest slip sent him plunging down in either into a grueling cubicle task or the street. Shoji Oda looked across the room to Hideo Yoshida. The man was celebrating his latest promotion with his former colleagues from the cubicles. Men like 
he would be leaving behind in a few hours. Was it worth it, this eternal fight up to the top of Fujitsu? Was it worth the crushing of Soji's soul and the damage to his body? If Fujitsu's sins were becoming tired by the day, was there any point in continuing this rat race? There are better things to do with one's life, surely. Surely there are better things to do. Encourage innovation. The churn. Ooh. Get more Zushin support. Increase Japan's approval. 1%. Chinese support, 1.25%. We're getting better with the Zhujin, which is not bad. I kind of want to increase them. That's what we're really fine for. Um, the Chinese support, though, is at 51%. That's barely going up. Ooh. <coughs> I don't want to lower Zhujin support, because this one only increases Zhujin support. Um, let's get more Chinese support, too. I don't want to lower it. Encourage innovation. Or the churn. I kind of want to do this one, even though we get more Japanese approval. We don't really need it, though. But we get more growth. We're going to do this one. We'll seek out our new engineers from the ranks of our middle managers, Zhu Jim, who predominantly occupy administrative and supervisory roles. These bureaucrats will be rotated through a series of different positions and roles to gauge their effectiveness and creativity. Innovation will be encouraged, but only in closely controlled settings with a significant oversight. While beneficial to the Zhu Jim, the Chinese lower class will be displeased at her favoritism. Yeah. 36 days left, huh? Interest. And where are we at for this? 70%. So I want to do this one, but not really. I want to wait for the other, another big one to hit first. Happy August. Yeah. I don't want to lower any more support for anything. And Chinese support's just got awful. But if we can get Zushin support to get up to higher, to get it positive for us, yeah, well, that'd be good overall for everybody. I don't know guys left. 30 some. Hope you have more. 33 days. Come on, get at least one more up here. The one that costs like 20 political power. 89, 85. Maybe we're to buy this one too, because we're ahead. Uh, Do we get it? Yeah, no. Come on. Because we could burn a little bit more approval here, too. And of course, as soon as we do that, this one pops out. Come on, got it. We can't increase the profitability earlier on, but whatever. A note of caution. Hi, double check. They need everything before, before leaving the house. Today was a special day. In a big meeting coming with a pioneer in a small scale uh, processors called Haru Corp. He can afford to be late nor leave any of his work materials behind. He practically salivated to think about what he'd seen once he got inside the company's HQ. As a subsidiary of Fujitsu, there were bound to be wonders. Just as he opened the front door, Leong called his name. He turned, groaning, to his father. Listen, Leong said, you're eager and that's good, but try not to buy completely into Ibuka's words about competition. Save some room in your head for yourself, understand? Hey, his mother uh, poked her into the foyer, and don't overwork yourself. The stress of their saying the people who she needs to go through on a daily basis. She shook her head, chilled by the thought of Hey going through the same. I'll be fine, Hey said to both of them. No, I gotta go. He headed out the door before they could say another word. A surprise was waiting for him at, uh, when he got to the corporation. corporation. The men who greeted him were Haru executives but suits from Fujitsu. Hei knew each of them by name, and now apparently they knew him as well. Ah, oh, here he is, said the eldest among them, smiling at Hei as they gave him a princely welcome. You've been causing quite a stir. We're wondering, said another man, if you'd be interested in ongoing correspondence with Fujitsu. Hei was stunned, but for once he had recovered his wits, he saw the opportunity for what it was, the things he could do with the Fujitsu partnership. He swallowed and collected himself. I would be very interested. A wise choice in talent search. Even more Zushin support. Nice. Our initiatives have begun to show their first results, but cannot pass over our own overlooked minds within Fujitsu. Um, although a thorough search for talent and expertise within the company will be conducted to find anyone who may have been missed in our race to the top, the prospective minds, of course, <clears throat> will go join the growing ranks of our engineers de gen engineering department. Soon, Fujitsu's engineers will be known worldwide for their talent and skill, for, the, for whom no problem is too difficult. After all, we are Guang Gong's best, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, see you tomorrow, see what else we can do in terms of making Fujitsu very, very profitable, as well as uh, maybe attempting to get a little bit more support throughout all those regions, oh my god. But thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.